All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to everyone. Good morning to everyone. Listen, it is time for morning motivation. Come on in, hit your like tag and share button. We are live this morning. Good morning to everyone. Hopefully everyone is able to see this pretty well this morning. Doesn't look like I have a really strong signal. I uh, don't really know what's going on with the computer. Not picking up a signal right now, but we are live here this morning. Uh, so come on, hit your like tag and share button. It is 7.30 Monday morning. Come on, it's the day after Sunday. We had a great time yesterday here in Tanzania. I saw we had a great time in church on yesterday. So we're going to get this thing started. Come on, hit your like tag and share button. Uh, we are recording live this morning uh, here for our morning motivation. Come on in, hit your like and share button, y'all. Uh, we are dealing with the book Crushing by T.D. Jakes. But can we, before we go back there, can we really chime in on what we experienced on yesterday. I am telling you, yesterday was a truly awesome time. I uh, don't know why this uh, this is not receiving a good signal, so I'm praying that uh, as it's recording and as you're listening to it, it is something that is uh, being able to be viewed uh, in, a, in a way that's um, pleasing to the eye. <laughs> I believe that's what I wanted to share. I wanted to be pleasing to the eye. You guys know how how I, how I am with excellence and how I am with making sure that things are done the, way, the right way. Uh, so anyway, we're here this morning, all the way in Arusha, Tanzania. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. It is actually afternoon here, uh, but it's a good morning for everyone there. And I'm praying that this is coming in really well for everyone and it's due well for everyone. Thank God for us. Thank God. Thank God for technology. Thank God for Sunday morning. Sunday morning at New Kingdom was absolutely fantastic. Uh, thank God for my wife, Pastor Diane. She declared in your word, put it in your spirit. Don't look back. Lord, type that in there for y'all this morning. Don't look back. Don't you dare go back there. Don't you dare. Because uh, uh, those looking back can be hinder, can be a hindrance. Looking back can be hazardous. Uh, there are so many things that looking back could do for you. The one thing it can't do is push you forward. Uh, we know uh, when you get caught up in looking back, you're never going to be able to move forward into that place. That was a word from the Lord on yesterday as God intended that for us to have. So I am looking at the signal. It's not looking great, but uh, I believe that the word is still going to go forth. So we're going to keep moving in this season. Listen, she said, don't look back and you can't afford, you can't afford to look back. So as I am uh, reflecting on that word, I'm looking at persons that were at that altar and uh, only the ones that came to the altar were the ones that made the decision Say, I'm not looking back. I'm moving forward. And I don't know who's on. I don't know who's on this live right now. I think I know exactly who's on this live. And you made the de declaration that from this season on, I'm moving forward. Good God Almighty, I am moving forward. This is not a time for me to um, worry about with the things I can't change because we know today matters. And yesterday ended last night. Uh, and even in that vein, we go forward. Um, I want to go backwards again. Go a little bit backwards to our. A discipleship class on yesterday on Sunday morning. That discipleship class was talking about the servant. Good, the problem we are having um, as disciples, or the problem that many persons have of letting go, is that you don't recognize that God has called you to be a servant. Servants do not have an um, option. Y'all not talking to me. Servants do not have an option when the master tells the servant. What to do, the servant is required to adhere to the command. The problem that we have and the problem that many of us have and the reason we don't want to operate as a servant is because of our, our history, our history of being slaves. Uh, when we came here, uh, people, persons, unfortunately corrupted uh, the term servant. And because they corrupted the term servant against us, Anytime we hear that word, it brings a negative connotation towards us. So therefore, we don't want to be seen. We don't even like hearing that word certain or even if Paul makes it, I'm a slave to Christ. I'm a slave to righteousness. Anytime we hear those words slave, it really brings a negative connotation towards us. So we don't want to. Uh, adhere to it but in the purest form servant is an individual and is literally allowed god to guide and direct them throughout the entire day we are servants of the most high god and the moment we are able to embrace the word servant then god will be able to 
fully have access to us, God. So Sunday morning, uh, discipleship class experiencing God was was absolutely phenomenal. And then, like I mentioned, Pastor Diane did her job and did it very well and literally lit the place on fire and gave persons the strength to press forward and not look back. And while we were here on yesterday in Tanzania early in the morning, uh, uh, Apostle Larry Thomas, I pray that you watch that live. It was a straight, I mean, the people, I mean, un they went to a place that we weren't expecting them to go to. You can see it. Go on my page and look at it. Uh, in the Bible uh, in Tanzania, it was amazing. I need to put the dates on there. That's what I need to start doing is putting the dates on. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, thank God for Bishop Eric. Uh, he and his wife, uh, we are ex we were just um, ex excited. Uh, and we and the people uh, were so hungry for that word from uh, Apostle Larry Thomas. And it was amazing. And then I went to uh, the power of God for all nations church. Uh, in Arusha as well. Uh, I preached there and then also did a leading by feeding. We came from the book Habakkuk 2 and 2 and 3 for the vision is yet for a point in time. But before we get to that point, it says in God, in verse number 2, it says, and God answered me. Good God. God has and he will answer you at the appointed time. Lord, and I'm telling you, we went to that place. We had an altar call. We had an encounter. People were going, I'm um, listen, laying out, stretched out late. They needed to hear that God has not forgotten about them, that God has a word in store for them. And I'm excited. We were excited for what God was doing in their life, in that great church as well. And then we did a leading by feeding. I believe we fed over 110, 115 families on yesterday um, at that great fine church. Uh, Sister Regina is probably on right now. just want to thank God for Sister Regina, Nye, and uh, Gideon, a great, great, great men and women of God who uh, have been assisting us uh, in our leading by feeding Africa uh, initiative. Uh, and it's going all around the globe. I'm telling you, and it's going all around Africa. Uh, we started a non-government organization, uh, which is basically starting a small business, uh, starting a nonprofit here in um, Tanzania. Uh, and it's called Leading by Feeding Africa, LBFA. Uh, we, are, we have another organization, as we mentioned uh, last week. So anyway, that has been a uh, recap of what we have done. Uh, and now today, uh, actually, as this is uh, right, as we're recording this right after this recording, we're going up to a school called Shikabania School. We're going to do some video there. Uh, you're going to probably see some of that video. Uh, we're going to be with these great students. There's a lot of students there. We're going to be encouraging them. Uh, you're going to see my mother, Elder Duckett. She's going to be there encouraging them. Um, uh, Apostle will be there encouraging them. Captain Butler will be there encouraging them. Of course, I will be there encouraging them. And then we're going to have another, come on, somebody, the new kingdom don't play around. We ain't got time to play. We ain't got time to waste time. And then we're going to do another leading by feeding up at Nukaranga Village, uh, which is actually on Mount Miro. If you want to look it up, look up Mount Miro in Tanzania, huge mountain, a extremely large mountain up at the top of those mountains. Um, in certain areas, there are giraffes up there, a lot of great um, vegetation, a lot of cropping is going up there. We're going to be literally feeding widows uh, up there. You're going to see the video. You're going to see the pictures. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, please make sure, listen, you got opportunity uh, to sow into Leading by Feeding. That's dollar sign Leading by Feeding. That's the cash app. Dollar sign Leading by Feeding. I'm telling you, you will not you would not be disappointed. You see the work that we're doing. So a seed in leading by feeding. Leading by feeding is doing tremendous, tremendous work. You see the work. We don't have to, have to make stuff up. Come on, somebody. We ain't got to make no numbers up. We ain't got to make things up. We are doing it. You can see it visually. We got food coming in from all over. Listen, God has opened up a door. We got food coming in other organizations. And I'm telling you, it's been amazing. So listen, we're going to have, and we need volunteers. If you want to volunteer, please call the office. Um, ask for Deaconess Fatina uh, Tyler. That's the office number is 410-553-4505. Again, that's 410-553-4505. We need volunteers, especially during these cold months. You don't get a lot of volunteers that want to come out during the cold months. 
Uh, but we need them because we got an extraordinary abundance of food. Uh, we didn't hit the bumper crop, Jesus. Am I talking good? We didn't hit the bumper crop for the food that's coming in. So we're going to need persons to help us bag them. We're going to need persons to help us distribute them. I know a lot of the distribution times are during the day. So many of you are at work. But listen, get the calendar from Deaconess uh, Fatina. We're going to post the calendar. I'll be posting it on my page. Uh, consistently um, coming up for February. February calendar should be out. Uh, Deaconess, if you don't mind, make sure we get that calendar posted immediately uh, today. Uh, make sure it's posted. I will post it on my page. Everybody that has access to the calendar, post it on your page. Uh, we want to make sure persons are able to eat during this season. Well, listen, that's been the recap, but let's go. We are going into our teaching by the great TD Jakes. It's crushing, uh, crushing uh, part uh, quality control type in crushing dash quality control part three crushing dash quality control part three all right we are going in this morning yes Lord. thank you god all right i am on page 25 page 25 says this look at what it says i'm in the middle of the page just as he intended with christ god never destined us to remain in seed form he did not design us in such a fashion because nothing eternal could ever exist temporarily. Could God. He did not leave. And so what he's saying is, since he did not leave us in seed form, come on. He's saying he, you are not going to end up the way you started. If somebody is going to grab hold of that today, come on, grab hold of that this morning. I will not end up the way that I started. I need somebody to help me today. I will not end up the way that I started. That is a good word for somebody because just because I started out one way does not mean I'm going to end it. That's good. I'm going to preach this morning because I really didn't get a chance to preach yesterday. He is literally encouraging someone this morning. Just because you started out one way does not mean you're going to end it. Even though 2024 has started out, it started out raggedy for you. It started out messy. It started out in, uh, in lack. God says because it started that way, that's not mean you're going to end that way so we need you to make sure that you grab hold of that this morning you started out in C form but you're not going to end in C form you started out broke but you're not going to end broke you started out uh, uh lacking but you're not going to end lack you started out uh, a lack of peace but just not going to be the end somebody type in that's not the end of my story this is not the end of my story and i need a, i need a disciple that is live. I need a disciple that is in care. I need a disciple that's maybe um, dealing with some struggles. I need a disciple that may be going through some issues that they wish they wouldn't have to go through. I need you to type in. This is not the end of my story. Oh, yeah, that's good. Not the end of my story. This is not the end of my story. So God told me, he said, he continues to say, God's desire has always been to reconnect us back to himself and take us, listen to me, from finite to infinite. Woo! It's his desire for us to have a relationship with him that literally exceeds beyond, come on somebody, please do not get distracted by these dogs. As much as y'all know, I do not like them, uh, but they always want to seem to be barking why I'm doing this recording, but God, to God be the glory. Some of y'all know y'all dog lovers and y'all love it. Uh, but anyway, this is what he wanted to tell me. He told me, he shared with us that it was his desire that he comes back into right relationship with us. And because we're back in right relationship with him, come on somebody, because we're in right relationship with him, we are going from finite to infinite good god that means that we will not we will always exist there's not an end to us even when we pass from this um life to the next that is not the end it is literally the beginning of an infinite us god we are going to be in infinite form i need somebody to grab because when you grab hold of that when you grab hold 
of the fact that you are transitioning from finite to infinite it leaves a mark on you you're no longer afraid of things you're not afraid of rejection you're not afraid of death you're not afraid of losing you're not afraid of going back you're not afraid of god using you you are ready to go and move because you are going you are in right relationship with god and you are in a finite form i mean infinite form thank you god you know that's your fi your final transition is into infinite internal eternal life he who has the son type it in he who has the son has life he who does not have the son of god does not have life first john 5 11 and 12 and this is the testimony and this is the testimony God has given us eternal life. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. Good word. That's good. Okay, so here we go. Still on 25. One of the things I love most about God's word is how God addresses every season of life. Come on, somebody type in there's seasons in my life. Type it in there, y'all. Y'all need to know there's seasons in your life. There's seasons in your life. That's the reason why there's some good days and then there's going to be some not so good days. I'm here to tell you when, you know what the mature disciple does? The mature disciple lives like, lives the same life despite the days, despite the seasons that they're in. Despite the not so good days and despite the great days, guess what? I'm still living a, I'm still living like this. <laughs> I'm still living like this. It does not matter. It's listen. There were some things that happened last week. There were some things that happened last week that I'm telling you, I could have lost it over. I, I mean, literally lost it. Guess what God has matured me to do? Live like this. I can't go up. I can't go down. I'm not. I am. I refuse to be controlled by situations that I have no control over. I refuse to allow anything that is not of literally that is not God, that God did not intend me to have an emotional attachment to for me to take me. I've learned to I've learned to pray and give it to him and allow God. It's a reason it happened. It's a reason certain things that happen in your life. And you have to know that God is in complete control. And when you know God, somebody he need to hear that. You needed to hear that this morning. He wanted me to tell you that he's in complete control of the situation that you have no control over. Thank you, Lord. I think I got my rhythm now. Thank you, Lord. You 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 in a you got a season you're in a you're in a life situation that you're trying to get control over you're trying to control it you're trying to but you have no control over it. he said listen I'm in complete control of the situation you have zero control over wow thank you yeah I'm telling you if I could if I could share with you what it was you would have been like pastor it's no earthly way. I'm over 7,500 miles away. And guess what? It's absolutely nothing I could do about it. It's nothing I it's nothing I tried to do about it. I prayed and God said, let me handle it. Fire. Somebody type in it. Let God handle it. I'm waiting for somebody to grab that this morning. Somebody just got set free. Let God handle it. Whatever the it is that you are uh, that you are trying to uh, understand why it happened, I'm here to tell you: don't even ask the question why. Don't even wrestle with why. Why waste time? Woo! Help me, oh God! Why trying to figure out why is just a waste of time? God says I am in control, so let me handle it. Ooh, I just met, I just met somebody typing in asking why. And if I type it in there, trying to figure out why wastes time. When you are living in real time, why doesn't even I just ran somebody out of my house. 
I just ran somebody. I somebody just pulled the car over, got out, and just started shouting. You know what? Because why trying to figure out why waste time when you in real time? Why does not matter? Thank you, Lord. I think the dog. You know what? I just figured it out. Thank you. The Holy Spirit just revealed to me the dog is my amen corner. Ah! I can't hear nobody shouting on here. So he said, let me just give you the dog to shout for you in this morning. Come on, y'all. When you're in real time, why does it matter? You don't, you sitting around figure, why did this happen? Why am I going through this? Why is all this happening to me? Why, do, why, 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 why all that? Why are people, why, what reason does it, what reason, what reason do you need? Why does it matter? Why is in real time, why does not matter? That's good. That just sets body free. Because that's been your struggle. That has really been your struggle. Trying to figure out why. Wow. Does it matter? For many persons... What the why is going to do, what the why will do, when you still, the why is going to lead you closer to him. Because then he's going to tell you, it don't even matter why. All I need you to do is in a relationship with me. Death all around you. You ask the question why, does it matter? You in real time, people, people passing away every day. I'm looking at certain things. I'm look, I looked at somebody's obituary. I think over the past two, two or three weeks, I've seen at least a personal week die around my age. I'm like, what is going on? And God said, does it matter? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> does it matter? You got work to do. Stay in your assignment. Stay in your assignment. Do your job. Why won't even matter? I'm telling you, somebody just got, I'm, somebody just got set free. Stay in your assignment. Become a disciple. Well, Pastor, I don't know what my assignment is. I do know what your assignment is. You know what your assignment is. Your assignment is to be a disciple. What do you mean, Pastor? That means you need to stay in this word. That means you need to uh, begin in a discipleship class. You need to read your book that you go. You need to meditate on his word day and night. You need to take on Joshua 1 and 8. I will meditate on his word day and night. That's your assignment. Become an emotionally intelligent, emotionally detached disciple who operates in real time on pastor i don't understand this real time and the reason you don't understand it is because you're not in the word real time everything is pure i'm saying i'm giving you all these sands and it's all coming through discipleship thank you god all right so here we go look what it says okay it says one of the things I love most about God's word is how it, how God addresses every season of life, beginning, middle, and end. If Jesus is God's only begotten son, how could he, come on, how could he, how could we not assign the same timeless and eternal nature to him that we do with God? In fact, this truth is, found, is the foundation from which John begins his gospel account of the life of Christ. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. John, most famous saying in the text, outside of, for God so loved the world, John 3, 16, John 1, 1 through 4, is for me the most famous, his, his most impactful saying. Everything that you're hearing in this scripture right here, if you give it the proper priority it should have in your life, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So why you, I don't understand, Pastor. You, me, and everyone on this live, everyone attached to you, needs to understand the word, the power of the word. The word was with God. Why is it always so important? It didn't say, listen to me. We got a lot of things that we do in church. 
We have a lot of things to help bring persons in. We have a lot of things to help us fellowship. But I hate to tell you, it didn't say in the beginning was praise and worship. It did not say in the beginning was ushers. It did not say in the beginning was the it did not say in the beginning was the, it did not say in the beginning was the dance ministry. It did not say in the beginning was the audio video ministry. It did not say in the beginning was leading by feeding or fellowship. It did not say that it said in the beginning was the word. Type it in there right now. In the beginning was the word. Why is that so important? Everything you need is in the word. The weapon that you need to fight the enemy with is the word. Every God says, I am found in the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word is God. You have to understand that you have to embrace that word. The word of God has to be your primary source of encouragement, your primary source of of, uh, of defeating the enemy, the primary source of wisdom. I know other people want to give you advice, but the word is your wisdom. It is your guide. It is everything you need. I need you to type that in this morning. The word is everything I need. The word is everything I need. Wow. That's good. This is real good. All right. Come on, y'all. Look at us. What he's saying here. It says, I'm still in, um, I'm at the bottom of page 125. Through him, all things, I'm sorry, he was with God in the beginning. Who is he talking about? He, we talking about Jesus Christ. Through him, him being Jesus, all things were made. Without him, Jesus, nothing was made that has been made. Okay. Everything, everything that we have. Everything that we're using, everything that we're coming across, every food that we're eating, everything that we're using, this uh, these uh, instruments for this live, uh, these these tools for this live, this camera, this microphone, uh, your car. Listen to me, every, your bed that you're sleeping in, uh, this light, this ring light that I'm using, everything. Somebody type in everything. Everything was made through him. Oh my. See, this is the power of this word. This is the power. This is why the enemy did not, I tell you, my, I, in my mind, my flesh was saying, lay in that bed until you got, until it was time for you to leave. But the word God said, I needed someone to understand the power of the word of God. I needed them to understand what John 1 and 1, under, uh, John 1 through 4 really meant. Everything, everything, everything was made through him there was nothing that was made that did not come through him fire without him nothing was made that has been made in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind the light shines in the darkness hence why we need you in it's no longer I who live, but it's the Christ that's living in me. Light is in you. You are the light on the hill. You are the light. You cannot be hidden. You shouldn't be hidden. Light overcomes darkness. Darkness, and it says it right there in the scripture. It says it right there in the scripture. Uh, and the darkness has not overcome it. Darkness cannot overcome. We, You know, in the end, we win, right? Type it in there, y'all. In the end, we win. In the end, we win. The fight is already fixed. It's... In the end, we win. That's good. That's real good. That's real good. In the end, we win. Thank you, Lord. I needed that. <laughs> wow. Somebody needed to hear that this morning. Please be encouraged this morning that you're going to win. We will win. Type that in there this morning, please. We will win. We're stacking wins every day. Thank you, God. You're encouraging me. Just keep stacking the wins. You're building. Oh, Shata. Oh, my Lord. We're building people up every day. Thank you, God. We're building people up every day. I'm telling some of the disciples right now, I'm calling on you because I'm stretching. We need, we need more facilitators. So get ready. 
I got persons, I got groups I need to have facilitators in, and we're going, and we're stretching you. I'm stretching you because we stacking wins. The people that need to hear your story, we stack. Asha, oh, thank you, God. Woo, I needed this encourage myself. Thank you, Lord. Tried to make me feel like I was less than. Thank you, Lord. Try to make me feel like I was doing too much. Didn't want to see, allow me to see the people that are being encouraged, the people that are being blessed through me. The enemy, I'm talking to you right now this morning. The enemy will blind you from the blessing you are having on other people. He will make you believe that you're not really doing as much as he, that you're really not having an impact on nobody's life. Somebody needs to know that somebody's being blessed through you right now. Somebody is literally being encouraged by you right now. Thank you, God. I needed to hear that myself. I know it. I see it. I know about the disciples, but I got here and I seen things that are going, but uh, I didn't feel and I had my feelings get in the way. Whew. Not this time. Not this time. Somebody typing in, not this time. Somebody is being blessed through you. Okay, here we go, y'all. The word became flesh and made his dwelling. Come on. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the, the one and only son who came from the fall of, excuse me, came from the father, full of grace and truth. That's John 1, 1 through 5 and verse 14. Page 26. Listen. Since Jesus is the very fruitation of God's word, he must be the beginning. There we go. All right. Since Jesus is the very fruitation of God's word, he must be in the beginning or seed of our lives as well. The seed then was already present before God, before Jesus is simultaneously the vine and the seed. Therefore, the seed and vine are one. Woo. That's how powerful Jesus is. The seed and the vine are one. Thank you, God. Thank you. Confused? I know it's mind-bending and requires some reflection. Perhaps the Apostle Paul explains it in uh, it best in him uh, in his letter to the Galatians. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say into his into seeds, meaning many people, but into your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. With Jesus being the seed promised to Abraham as an inheritance, we must ask ourselves what the promise was inside of Jesus that was to be fulfilled. The promise carried by Christ is a bountiful harvest of fruit. Since Jesus is both seed and vine, we are the promised fruit bearing branches that spring forth from him. During the Last Supper, we see the seed of Abraham speaking with his spiritual offspring that will soon take up the task of not only bearing fruit, but also pointing other dormant seeds of promise back to the life-giving Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, now it's making sense. As God has positioned many of you to sit under this ministry, to listen to morning motivation. He is using me to bring Jesus back into your life in the position he's supposed to be. Okay, get this now. He is using this platform to bring Jesus back into your life. God, oh my, this is so good. Look at what it says again. Look at what it says again. This is good. This is good. Look, look what he says. He says, 
Uh, during the Last Supper, we see the seed of Abraham speaking with his spiritual offspring that will soon take up the task of not only bearing fruit, but pointing other dormant seeds. God told me, listen, you are not you're going to not only bear fruit. You're not only going to bear fruit in, from this ministry. You're not only going to bear fruit from this ministry, but you're going to point other dormant seeds of promise back to the life giving Savior, Jesus Christ. There's some dormant seeds. There's some seeds that are not alive around you and you are got to be the one that's going to point them back into the life and back into the life giving savior jesus christ you are the one that's going to bring other seeds i'm waiting for you this morning you are the come on somebody type in i'm the one i am the one to bring those individuals back to the life giving savior jesus christ i am the one that god is using in this season to resurrect dead bodies god, dead people that have given up on life dead spirits that literally have said i'm not doing this anymore i can't do this anymore you are the offspring of jesus christ you're no different than those disciples who were sitting at that communion table at last the last supper you're no different he's planting in that he planted in them the power to up to up to literally uh, bring back to life dormant seeds. I mean, to bring to life dormant seeds back to the life giving Savior, Jesus Christ. Do the work of the evangelist, evangelist. fulfill your ministry. Type it in there, y'all. Fulfill your ministry. Do the work of an evangelist. It's time. Mission overpopulate heaven. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Mission overpopulate heaven. Okay. If Jesus is the seed, come on somebody. If Jesus is the seed that grew into the vine that produces us as fruit bearing branches, the fruit we produce and the lives we live are seeds that God intends for a greater purpose. This is very, this is a very deep message right here. I want you to understand. I need you to get this. It's really big. Listen to what he's saying. If Jesus is the seed and grew into the vine that produces us as fruit bearing, bearing branches, the fruit we produce and lives we live are seeds that God intends for a greater purpose. What, what Jakes is trying to explain, oh my God, what Jakes is trying to explain is we have the same level of responsibility that Jesus has. We got the same power. He said in the word, greater works that we shall do. He's saying we are seeds. That's what he's saying. Read it. He's saying he grew into the vine which produced the fruit we produce and live. We live are seeds that God intends for a greater purpose. We were created to be more than temporary fruit. We are his eternal wine in the making. You're not just a fruit that's going to be here and gone tomorrow. You are an eternal wine in the making. This is good. I'm starting to really understand this, um, this book. And why God wanted me to read this to y'all. Um, so you could really get an understanding of how important your life is. I'm not just a nobody. I'm not just Dante. I'm eternal wine. Whoop! Got shut up in the making. Come on, type it in. Type your name. Dante, you eternal wine in the making. My God, if y'all don't get this this morning, you are not finite. You are an infinite. You are eternal wine in the making. That means th the impact that you have on this world will never end. It's going to always live. My grandmother, 
both of my grandmothers because they knew the Lord. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I don't know if my grandfather and them knew the Lord. I think they understood it, but I don't think they, I didn't see them living it. I'm just going to be honest. I saw them loving. I saw, I saw them. I seen my grandmothers living it. I'm not trying to be, I seen them living it. So their life is still living through me and they're living through my children and they're going to be living through my children's children. You are eternal wine in the making. I'm just, I, I'm really hoping somebody's getting the impact of this this morning. Okay, we go. Dirty places. We're on page 27. How does the process of fermentation into eternal wine occur? So now it's a process. I'm going to type this in there. Wine making is a process. Wine making is a process. Here's the short answer over time in dirty places. So where will the process occur? Over time in dirty places. What we see in the natural realm, that means here in time, is a reflection of what we see spiritually because both are intertwined with one another. Okay? So in time and real time are intertwined. Good God. All right. Let's get out of here, y'all. I'm, I'm, I can't do this anymore. It's too much. Real time and in time are intertwined. As a result, we encounter another version of a natural child into an adult development of our spiritual nature in the spirit realm in real time. There is a process we enter into in which God cultivates and develops us into a healthy vine in his vineyard. That's in real time. And God has made Jesus to be the type of vine we are to exemplify in each stage of life. Jesus is our perfect example, our model of this intended maturation. I'm still stuck on this. In time, in real time are intertwined. In real time, God is cultivating us. Ooh. He says it right here. Let me make sure. God cultivates and develops us into a healthy mind. Okay. So we are also becoming a vine. Oh, have mercy. This is so good. In the spiritual realm, God, God, the Bible declares, if you remember it, I am the vine, you are, but he's the, he just gave us the revelation that in the, in real time, we are being, we, we are being cultivated into a vine. Gosh, this is the reason why I can't. It's the reason why I can't miss a morning motivation myself. That revelation just hit me like a ton of bricks. In real time, I'm being cultivated as a vine. That's big. That's big. That's big, big. In real time, I'm being cultivated as a vine. Here we go. For instance, I'm on page 27. We already know Christ to be the seed of Abraham. He came in our likeness so that he would be familiar with each of our trials, difficulties, and temptations. In essence, he experienced all the growth pains we would experience. As Jesus grew in stature, we know that he grew in favor with God and with men and began bearing fruit. That's Luke 2 and 52. As Jesus grew in favor and stature, that means as Jesus grew up, as Jesus matured, he began, listen to me, we know he grew in favor and with men and began bearing fruit. That's your life. Grow, he grew, 
though he was an adult producing wonderful a wonderful harvest during his three year of ministry, Jesus was not meant to simply work miracle after miracle. His life on earth was intended to move from something temporary to something etern eternal. Through Christ, though Christ became a physical adult, his spirit, my God, though he became an adult, his spirit. Come on, everybody. We got about 15 minutes left. Though he became an adult, his spirit. As God is cultivating you into a vine, you have no idea the power that's being produced in you right now. That's why so many of y'all stand connected to more motivation. I get it now, God. That's why I see God now making me, not making, well, told me, because I'm his servant, to continue it, even while I'm here. To make sure it's done and done correctly. And done consistently. To get in a rhythm. To make sure it's done right. <laughs> Because this right here, this reading right here, for you to understand, and for and it's this in the spirit realm in real time, I'm being cultivated as a vine. Oof. Somebody better grab hold of that today. I'm being cultivated as a vine. Uh, let's make sure I got this right. His spirit carried an even greater promise of eternal life. And that's not just one made up of miracles that will be temporarily praised. Uh, in order for the spiritual promise to be birthed, the supernatural seed had to enter into its own version of development. Like any seed that would sprout it had to be planted. In essence, everything the seed knows about itself has to end. God, here come that death again. Everything you know about yourself has to end. The version of you that you know can no longer exist. Paul declared, I die every single day. This morning, I had to die a death. This morning, I had to die. I had to die a death. It was some things I needed to die to. Woo! Help me, oh God. This morning, somebody, God is preaching to somebody this morning right now. There's some things that you had to die to today. There's some areas of your life that it is time for you to die. And he said, if any man should follow me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. There's some things you got to die to because he says, uh huh. like any seed that would sprout, it had to be planted. In essence, everything the seed knows about itself has ended. The moment you got planted, you died. You died in a dirty place. God Almighty. That dirty place that God, let me preach to you because you're not ready for this today. That place that God found you in, you died. The moment you said yes, the moment you gave him your life, you died. You died in a dirty place. That seed now has been planted. And since you've been planted and you are starting to show forth some fruit, you are starting to show forth some growth. You have come to the end of yourself. Type in the name, y'all. Encourage somebody right now. I've come to the end of myself. My Lord and my God. I've come to the end of myself. What a word to close out on a day. It's no longer I. Because I've come to the end of my self the bible in john 15 5 says i am the vine you are branches if a man remains in me and i am him he will bear much fruit 
But Jake just gave us a revelation. In the spirit realm, in real time, God is cultivating us to be a vine. Oh, gosh. So I'm hoping you're getting this because I'm getting it finally. I'm finally getting it. I'm finally getting it. The people that God is attaching to you are your branches. Did you understand what I just said? The people that God is attaching to you are your branches. And then you're going to birth the revelation out of them that they also are fine. That will also produce branches. Wow. This is too much. This is too much. This is too much. The Bible declares, I am a vine. I am the vine. And then Jake's the call to share with us in real time. God is cultivating us to be a vine. Woo. This is y'all, this heavy. This is heavy right here. This is heavy right here. This is heavy right here. Let me let me go there. Let me go this. Let me go ahead. Let me let me close this out right. Let me close it out right. Close it out right. He says, the seed then must die just as Christ died so that he could give birth to us as God's spiritual children, his divine offspring. If we are called to be like Christ, if we are called to be like Christ, to become like him as we are called by God, we must accept the fact that we will experience a similar growth process. As we undergo maturation and we come to understand that our temporary fruit was never the end game of an everlasting master, but rather just as a single step caught in the process of making eternal wine. The fruit that you're bearing is temporary. He's trying to help you to become eternal wine. The same process that Jesus went through, the same when you go. Same when you have to go through. He showed me some areas that I'm telling y'all that I had to die to. I love it. And this morning motivation is showing me, is revealing to me and in me what I have to die, what I had, because it's done, it's dead. What I had to die to. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody better tell them thank you this morning. Come on, let me get this. Okay, here we go. All right. Uh, as a result, our spiritual development from seeds to ma uh, mature fruit bearing branches demands that we confront a step that many of us grapple with understanding, growing. In dirty places. Somebody type it in air. I'm going to grow. In dirty places. That means in the season of my life. That's intended to kill me. I'm going to grow. Because I know I am a seed. That's been planted in a dirty place. That will die to self. And will grow into eternal wine. This is good. This is real good. Here we go. When everything falls apart in our lives, we are broken but not destroyed. The exterior husk we've all relied on for so long begins to fail us as the waters of life soften our protective coating. The tender inner life and identity of who we are is naked and helpless in front of those that threaten the only existence we know. When we are placed in perilous circumstances, we rush to secure ourselves and hold it in place. We shoot, listen to y'all, 
we shoot roots into the soil beneath us in hope of anchoring ourselves against life storms. We yearn for someone or something to hold us, lift us, and sustain us. But too often, we droop and wilt in the winds of our isolation and loneliness. How do we respond to being broken by life? At the moment life starts lifing, we try to secure ourselves in something that doesn't have the power. We try to grow roots in something that is so temporary because life is life and life is breaking us. And, it, and we find ourselves in unstable ground. Come on, somebody. We find ourselves in unstable ground. Listen, y'all. I got one more. I'm going to try to get through this last paragraph. Listen. How do we respond to being broken in life? Where do we try to put our roots down to secure out your life's focus? Do you focus on acquiring money only to find that it doesn't fulfill you? Do you reach out for sex only to discover that it touches, that the touch of another person is just a reflection of your own lo aloneness? Perhaps you reach for church only to realize that religion without God's voice is nothing more than sprinting inside a hamster wheel. All those things you're reaching for. Reaching for another person. And all you're doing is trying. <laughs> you're reaching for a person that you're hoping can fulfill a void. Listen to me. But the person, the void, listen. The person that's going to fill that void is you on the inside of you. It's the real time you. Remember, end time and real time are intertwined. When you're alone and you think you need a body, you don't need somebody. You need the body. You the you that's part of the body. It's not them that you want or need. Lord, you are opening up. You are opening. It's the part of the body that's you. He said it right there. Look at what he said. I'm closing right here. He said, look what he said. He said, do you reach for sex only to discover that the touch of another person is just a reflection of your own aloneness? Have you even reach reach for church only to realize that religion without God's voice is nothing more than sprinting inside of a hamster wheel? You're 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 searching for. You know what you're longing for. You're longing for the kingdom, and the kingdom can be found only inside of you, y'all. This is Monday morning. This has been a little too heavy for me this morning. It's been morning motivation. It's the Monday morning edition. Lord, listen, y'all, pray for me. Uh, we're going to have another great session tomorrow on Tuesday. Uh, we got a discipleship class on Tuesday. We got a becoming whole on Wednesday. And I'm all these just building up my strength. I'm just letting y'all know I'm getting my strength back uh, to try to get me, not strength, getting my rhythm, getting in the rhythm on how to make this thing work and, and keep it going in real time. But I'm so excited that you guys came to me to, uh, this morning. End time and real time are intertwined. End time and real time are intertwined. Wow. What a word. God in real time is creating you to be a vine. Uh, Please meditate on that today. He's making you a vine. I got it, God. I understand it now. Listen, y'all, this has been your host, Dr. Dante, and we have been live this morning for Morning Motivation. I pray that you liked. I pray that you tagged someone. I pray that you put somebody onto this. I pray that you forward this. Pray that you forward this to one of your groups 
or whatever uh, uh, social media platform that you're on, text it to somebody. Listen, make sure that you are on tomorrow morning, uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, we're gonna have we're gonna continue in the book crushing. Uh, pray for us, as I mentioned. Uh, we have leading by feeding. We got a conference that's gonna start on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, some great things are still happening here, but I'm telling you the revelation that I'm a vine that God is cultivating me, cultivating me into a vine in real time. I'm never letting go of that. It has changed my whole outlook on ministry. It has changed my whole outlook on ministry. Listen, y'all. God bless everybody. Listen, have a great day. Make today amazing. God bless you all. I will see you on tomorrow. Listen, y'all. Make today amazing. It has been an awesome day. I'm your host, Dr. Dante. We'll be in live. We were live here Monday morning for our morning motivation. See you tomorrow. God bless.